Hello and welcome, I'm Marie Yaresa. This Rappler Talk, we tackle one of the problems we live with every day, every second you spend in traffic, the frustration you feel. Where joining us is the man who is in charge of dealing with this in Metro Manila, Metro Manila Development Authorities. The chairman is Tim Orbos. Tim, thanks for Hi. joining us. Thank you, Maria. Thank um, you. You've come into this job five months, six months in, five months in, no, right? Five months in. Five yes. months in. Yes. Um, it's every, it touches every one of us here. I mean, what is the scope of the problem that you see? Well, um, the problem is really there. It's it's real. It's <clears throat> it's a it's a crisis. Definitely, we're in a traffic crisis right now. When I came in, uh, one thing I noticed was that uh, the attitude of people. People were fed up, people were angry, people were impatient, and uh, you know, the, the government really has uh, long-term uh, solutions uh, in place. We have the, with this government right now, with President Duterte, definitely he has asked us and we, had, we, we have to make sure that the, the railways, the uh, infrastructure will be done. You know? We're not criticizing what happened in the past, but uh, it has all piled up. And then the role that we have right now, this government, is to make sure that, that uh, things will get done. But in yes. the meantime, because things will happen, what, two to three years, these are long-term solutions. In the meantime, the problem will remain, it will get big, it will even get worse. And then we can't just uh, take it sitting down. So, so the, really the role of MMDA in the, we have an interagency council on traffic, by the way. Yes. Headed by uh, Secretary Togate. And this is a good move. One thing that I realized uh, in the past government, oh, I, I became part of it for a while uh, when I was made assistant general manager for six months in MMDA. The okay. problem there was a, the lack of coordination, uh, the, la the lack of data sharing, which is very important. At one time in MMDA before, uh, we could not even get the data or the information of the franchises that were issued for Metro Manila, and it's very important very important. Now it's easy to get. There's any coordination. That's right. That's right. So going back to how, how it was when I started, uh, how, do you, how do you really make uh, things move a little faster? Right. You cannot solve the problem. You just need to make things a little faster for everyone and then for things to move. So, well, then, then we talked about it, me and Secretary Togada, and really said to, bring, to make people realize that instead of getting angry, why not help us? Why not be part of the solution? And, and that's how we started. We really had to bring in people to, to help us out. Uh, how, how did we do it? We, we looked at, well, I looked at the road, and there are stakeholders on the road. Right. And we tried to engage everyone in open discussion, in trying to help out, and bringing them to help out, uh, be part of the solution. So we talked first to the um, city buses. City buses were like, they're like big jeepneys when we came in. They would stop and uh, pick up passengers anywhere, and that would take a long time. So we told them, uh, <clears throat> only get people or passengers uh, on bus stops. It was hard and difficult at first, but then they they realized we were serious, and now it's, that's why right now um, we don't need to, to uh, uh, be there on the bus stops to, to catch them. <laughs> Then we started talking to uh, the private vehicles. Private vehicles, uh, we, we had this no uh, window, uh, extended uh, no window uh, number coding. Yes. Which is more uh, stringent than the, the ones before. But we had to tell them if we don't do this, things will really get worse. There were complaints, definitely. Right. But then people understood. So, can, can I get the scope of the problem right now? Oh, I mean, okay, Metro sorry. Manila. No, no, no. It's it's uh, it's good that you're yeah. going into your short-term ones. Yes. But let's go short, medium, ah, okay. long-term, okay. right? So, in terms of the scope of the problem, you're talking uh, uh, Metro Manila is is it 12 million that we have here now? Uh, people? I, I would we? no. We're more than that. More than De definitely. We're about I would say 13 to 15. Million. 13 to 15 million. 15 yeah. million on a on a bad day. That that means when when and people have the provinces in. are yes. Um, and then in terms of the roads and and how we have they about are. 5,000 kilometers of road network, uh, of which 200 kilometers are national roads. So these are the ones with more than four four lanes, and then you have more than a thousand two hundred. Uh, intersections. 
that's where the traffic. So when you say that we're in crisis, what is the scope okay. of the capacity, uh, I guess? Capacity, what is the problem? Capacity, uh, ro uh, road carrying capacity is around 6,000 vehicles per hour per lane. That's, that's the ideal. Right. Right 6, now we're 000. hitting around 7,000. Okay. So, but that's even being, uh, being considered to our figures. Okay. Uh, if you really want, I was, I was talking to a <clears throat> Japanese engineer who was telling me, if you really want to, to have a good flow of traffic to run, let's say, 30 kilometers per hour, you need another EDSA on top of EDSA to make things move. So C5 was supposed to be that, but that, that's not enough? Well, you, you see, uh, the problem, okay, let, let, let me talk like a, like a private citizen, sure, which sure. I was Please. before. Yes. You know, if you really want to solve traffic, take out the, take out the pier, take yeah. out the ports, take out the, take out the buses, take out the airports here, then you would solve traffic. That's why it's so hard because we're all in this one place and then we can't do anything immediately to bring people out. Uh, why do we need why why uh, C five is congested? Because that's the main uh, main way for the trucks going in and out of uh, the ports, going uh, from north to south. Got it. Aside from the ones that's going inside and going outside the piers. Now that there's been a move, and I think uh, Secretary Togade is right that uh, there's been a move to bring out the the, the cargos to right. to Batangas and to Subic. That's right. That to, to decongest yes, all of to things, decongest. Right? Yeah. Then you have the airport. It's here, but then again, it's okay for them to be here. Yes. As because these are incidentals. The 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 ones that really uh, are creating the, the congestion are the, the ones that happen daily. You have uh, close to, I think, thirteen thousand buses in in Metro Manila. Of which about uh, seven thousand are provincial buses. Oh, wow. okay. So, what, what uh, a good solution is to bring them out also, or bring them to the uh, to the, the fringes, yeah, yeah. and then and then have something mm. coming in. Mm. What about I, I guess in terms of the the last administration to this mm. administration, because we've been talking about traffic for a while. Mm. Um, when you said your your long term plans were in place, what did you inherit? I mean, is there uh, the plans were there, definitely during the time of President Aquino. But not. But it was not executed. implemented. It was not executed. Are the plans good? Yes. Oh, the the plans good. Uh, <laughs> so not quite happy with it, right? So you'll change. You'll you you're looking at a mid at a longer term solution using yes. the plans. Uh, no, the plans were good, but you know, uh, it could have been better. Okay. Could have been better. It could have been uh, for the for the greater majority rather than for certain sectors. You mean private car owners uh, or yeah, the, yes, the wealthy? Yes. So the wealthiest are insulated, and the poor uh, bear the brunt. That's, that's part of the uh, problem. Another part is that uh, you know I also worked with that administration, and I have friends there. Yes. But. Uh, Honestly, I, 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 you know, certain certain corporations or certain uh, businesses were favored okay. with regards to traffic traffic solutions. Got it. Oh, uh, so and when you, when you talk about traffic, you should you should uh, not favor anyone. And we Absolutely. all experience the problem. Yes. So why why put, yes. put uh, certain sectors out of it? But anyway, go. That's political. Right. Traffic right. is should not be political. Unfortunately, so many things are political. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in the so n your long term plans are in place already, oh, or yes. you're in the process oh. of putting them? No, in no, place? no. We They're are. In place. Uh, President Duterte is very uh, aggressive on this. Uh, we're looking at what seven bridges immediately that would crisscross uh, Pasig River. Right. The one that will start will happen, I think, this quarter. It will, it will be built out. The one that will connect uh, Bonifacio to Pasig, very important. Um, then you've got the uh, the uh, the new trains for MRT coming in this quarter. You've got MRT-7 coming in in three years. You've yes. got uh, the extension of Line 2 coming in in two years. You've got uh, Line 1 extension coming in around the same time. Then you've got that uh, provincial bus terminals. Uh, Southwest will happen again in 24 months. South will happen in about, uh, what, uh, two and a half years. And then you've got the North Terminal to be bidded out. 
But again, these are what? Two to three years. Yes. Two to three years. Yes. In the meantime, where you've got a, a growing car population, vehicle population of... Well, last year, I was told yesterday, uh, total car sales uh, hit 400,000. 400,000 so, yeah. every year or it no, escalated It escalated yeah. because the previous year it was around 340. So, so there was an so increase of about, uh, well, 20%. Uh, um, it, so the, the, cars are, the cars are getting more, but then the roads are uh, finite, are fixed. So what do you do? What is your short term? Short, short term is really uh, on, on a... Sorry, one last problem yes. is that the regulation of metro MMDA is actually one of the one is the one that can pull certain things together but different yeah you've cities. got 17 LGUs, LGUs. Yes. Okay. okay please explain that because not everyone uh, also understands well, that it's hard MMDA is supposed to be the one that that uh, uh, would govern yep. metro manila unfortunately and it was strong it had a strong uh, mandate during the time of Imelda Marcos but uh, because of probably politics, um, the MMDA now is a mere a coordinating body. We don't even have police powers. So having said that, uh, it's really good that I'm not also a politician. Because, uh, well, in fact, I was, I was uh, telling the executive secretary, um, the best way to handle MMDA, if we are still with the kind of powers that we have, is for the the mayors to appoint or to recommend a, a general manager, Not, mm -hmm. and the chairman can come from them, right? Right. Because it it's hard to 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 have a, a political mandate um, with the mayors. They're they're, they're mayor, they 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 are kings of their own territory, Correct. and rightly so, because Correct. the problems there are their problems to, right. to solve as well. Right. So. It's tough uh, because uh, what you have right now, <clears throat> you have different uh, uh, laws governing traffic or regulations governing traffic in each of the areas. That's the reality. The truth is, though, however, we've talked with them, this new administration, we've coordinated with them, and, and now we, we, they all agree to... Because, again, um, uh, if you're, let's say, in your Mandaluyong, you can't live forever <coughs> independent of the kind of traffic uh, outside your area. Coming from Makati, going Makati, to... Yes, Pasig. yes, yes, Pasig. Uh, so, really, co cooperation and coordination. And that's where the the emergency powers of Secretary Togade is also ask. going to try to accomplish, you know, try to come out with a central authority rather than just... Uh, uh, leaving it to well, MMDA is a central authority supposedly, but right. but with stronger powers. And with with the emergency powers, what does that do with MMDA and with you with you? Well, MMDA will remain because MMDA uh, traffic is just one of the mandates of MMDA. Correct. We have flood control, we have solid waste, we have public safety. With with regards to you, you're a touch point for the public at every yes, at yeah. every level. Yeah, yeah but. Uh, well, I haven't had a uh, one-day vacation since I started. <laughs> no regrets? Uh, Any regrets? <laughs> I'm okay because uh, I, I, I'm telling everyone I, I won't last two, two, two years here. Anyone should, should not stay more than two years in this kind of job. It's a tough job uh, because uh, it's daily, right? That's daily, daily things. You, daily. Said to, you said that today you were, you were dealing with another oh, problem la, last, last night. night. Last, we had this bus that uh, overturned in, in Edsa. How large is MMDA? We have about 8,000 uh, 8, employees. We have 2,300 enforcers. Uh, but if you look at what I mentioned a while ago, 5,000 kilometers of roads, uh, 1,000 intersections, and then we have three ships. You only have about um, 700 enforcers covering the whole road network at any given time. So we're we're thinly spread. Right. We lack resources, we lack personnel, uh, we lack funds. How do you uh, address the problem? You have to bring in people to help you solve the problem. And Tim, you, with your background, it's, a, it's actually you cut across a lot of different things and you are familiar with the way government works. What do you bring to the table that will make it different? Personally, I mean, well, 
my I, I will never forget my experience my, that when I was in the private sector of being a motorist. <laughs> this is true. You uh, live it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I said. Eh, when I, one time they asked me, you know, we're all if if uh, traffic is a degree, then we're all doctorates already. That's why I rely on people to tell me, uh, private people to tell me what's happening in their area. Right. I, and what what uh, suggestions they may have. Yeah. You said no more than two years in the chairman position. Why is it? It's that hard. If I you mean, really want to do to do good, yeah, and uh, do good in in every sense, in being, uh, I mean, what what is expected of a public servant? Yes. Then I think two years is enough. Two to three years. Go back to the private sector. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you uh, need now to make things better? Uh, MMDA. Yes. It's a stronger uh, mandate in terms of uh, policing the or enforcing traffic um, we need police powers we need to have a say in franchising yes. in terms of uh, the, the public uh, utility vehicles that come in and out of our roads right. um, basically that's it um, of course that's not more bad. budget 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 but given that it's now consolidated and mm. there is this uh, the interagency yes, yes. Um, do you, it, the government are looking at the full because you move one lever it affects something else right if the ports clog oh, yeah, this affects yeah, yeah. I mean is, is, so is <laughs> how do we do it now yes. it's really a balance every day you try to move like yesterday I was talking to uh, the fuel tankers uh, association so if I ban them then the the planes won't 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 fly uh, won't have the reserves Correct. But if I let them use the road on a particular time, then it will clog up. Right. So if you don't, if you don't talk to them and bring them to forth your solution, it's going to be a problem. So I ask them, can you can we do it at night? Can you deliver at night? Now, of course, we need to we needed to ask the the, the ones uh, handling the fuel depots as well. Right. So we have to make we have to make sacrifices. Right. In order for this to work, we need to sacrifice. We need to sacrifice our own interests for the greater interest of, of, of Metro Manila. Just cannot. Eh? I think when we came in, the problem, even I, when I was in the private sector, my, my only objective was to get from point A to point B. And I don't care. I don't care what, what if, if uh, you know, somebody was on the road, there was a pedestrian, there was a motorcycle. I did not care. Yeah. So I turned into this savage uh, driver just yes. to get from point A to point B. We need to be part of the solution. We need to really think uh, hard that we can't be uh, isolated from this problem. We need to... It's a long way to go, yes. but, but uh, I think uh, people now are realizing that we need to, to, be, to be together in this. How do you determine success then in, in terms oh, in short, in, medium in, term, in, right? in, in the real, short term? Yeah, in real terms, we've, uh, as I mentioned a while ago, we have a measurement, a daily measurement of travel speed. Okay. okay. So when we started uh, our short-term solutions here and there, uh, our baseline was about uh, one hour and 25 minutes from Balintawak to Edsa, uh, to, to Ross Boulevard okay. every day. That's the stretch of That's Edsa. a stretch. Yeah. Uh, so we started doing solutions, talking to all the stakeholders. Um, when we did the no-window uh, number coding, it, was, it went down to, to about uh, 20 minutes no, we, we were uh, 20 minutes faster. Even during Christmas time, when we thought it would be the heaviest, it was not, it was not less than 10 minutes. Mm. Or not more, yeah, not less than 10 minutes. Yes. yes. So, thing, which means things, things were moving. Yes. Until now, that's what we're doing. But then, the problem is, uh, you know, the public has the right to, to ask for more. Yeah, to ask for more. On this one, it's tough, right? Because no matter what you and do, it may people, never be enough. And people will forget. <laughs> yes. And they again, they have a right. Yes. Because, you know, public service, public service. We should, we should provide better service. So that's where we're trying to, to, do, to do changes left and right. But the thing is, what I realize is there's so many things to do. So many things left unattended. I'll give you an example. There, there's this policy that came out, a uh, resolution that came out in 2012. Nose in, nose out. It wasn't implemented uh, for so many years. Nose in, nose out means if you're a bus, comp a bu a bus 
you need to go into your terminal with your with the front uh, going in and right. leave the terminal with the front going out. As you can see, a lot of uh, you've experienced yes, it. Yes. I'm sure that a bus would you you would suddenly stop because a bus would have to go in and out using the road. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we went. We went. I, I, I've been a motorist myself, and I never realized these things until I I, I really went down and looked at the details. My golly, in 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 uh, Pasay Rotonda, out of the 26 uh, terminals there, 11, 11 impossible for them to do a a, uh, a nose in nose out uh, drive. There's there there are terminals there that can only fit a bus. So how how can first of all the question that comes to your mind is how were these approved? Yeah. And and how can and then how we, how did we not realize these things in the past? So. That's another thing. People accept uh, accept already what is there as a as a truth, as right. Yes. People uh, accept already what is wrong as right. And then, then that's where we begin to to make uh, you know adjustments. We need. So it's 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 not just the the physical uh, enforcement, but also the attitudinal uh, behavioral uh, changes. Behavior changes. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Uh, Interesting. So we go from the infrastructure to the permits the local government the, the access of the cars and the, the lack of the discipline is accepted and behavior <laughs> it's okay. accepted you know we would tell motorcycle riders it's in it's in the law that you should have a helmet that you should have your lights on and then and, and, and uh, there's there's resistance resistance but you know I it's always uh, there's always a uh, definitely um, when people begin to realize that that uh, the government is serious, they, they, they become part of, 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 of these things. So um, we're, we're taking questions from Twitter and from Facebook, guys. If you have questions for MMBA Chairman Tim Orbus, <laughs> you can send them in. And we've got uh, a few. And actually, this is interesting because the first the first question coming in is from at Doblezeta. If you don't know him, we know, know him I well, know, know him. right? I know him. Be because yeah, of I know him. He's been part of MMDA. the MMBA. He's been trying to help us. Uh, when he was uh, with us, when he was in MMD, and even now as a, uh, as a private citizen and being part of the transport sector. So he's now part of Uber. So Eve's nice, nice to hear from you. Um, the question is actually on, on ride sharing. You just talked about the car sales that are here. His question is, what about ride sharing? I'm, What's I'm, your position I'm, on I'm it? for it. Definitely, ride sharing means lesser cars on the road. Right. Lesser cars parking because you'll have a, uh, one one, let's say one Uber bringing in uh, passengers to their destinations and then uh, without any need for parking. So I'm for Correct. it. I'm for it. Interesting. Technology. So this is another part. What's the role of technology in terms of helping solve this? Can, can uh, technology do more? I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a techie person, but definitely I know uh, it can shortcut things. It can make us realize things that uh, otherwise we would it would uh, we would not even know of. So, how I wish I can use technology uh, to maximize the use of technology for our problem. Is this a problem? And and I, I, I we know that uh, we're very much adept. And I mean that the, the Philippines uh, in terms of social networking. Yes. We have that universe. How to use it to help us is something that I would like to see. MMBA has put out some of the most uh, forward-looking, forward-thinking uh, tech tools like well, the cameras yeah. and uh, and social. I guess uh, the it, tools are there, but how to use it uh, to maximize its use is something that something we need to, we to push for. Also, how do you deal with? Uh, the hardest part to change are people's own mindsets. And actually, you talked about this a little mm. bit. Uh, their mindset in traffic, their mindset on uh, Uber, for example. Mm. That's a new, that's something new, right? How, how, how are you grappling with to, this? To, to accept that uh, in the first place, we can't, we shouldn't, I mean, I mean, me in public service shouldn't complain, shouldn't feel bad. And we to realize that uh, if, if I get a negative comment, that's what I'm saying. And to realize also that it's too much to ask anymore. For people to say we're sorry, uh, give us more time. We need to realize that we owe it to them. Eh? Uh, we owe it to them to 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 provide better service. Talagang it's hard. It's hard. Um, that's why I said two years. <laughs> or well, two years. Yeah, I, I I think I'm okay for two years. Or one year. One year is okay. 
it's better. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps getting shorter the more you think about the scope of it. How do you, on a daily basis, you know, now that you've, you've come into this job, how do you deal with your day? Uh, what kind of, of, how do you end your day? How do you begin your day? A tough question because uh, now, I, now I realize that I really don't plan out for a day. It's so many things suddenly happen. Uh, that you, you cannot plan because you don't you won't know that surprises uh, have in store with you as far as traffic is concerned <laughs> uh, you just have to be prepared for it of course we plan our day of course yes, we do yes, but yes. the attitude yes the attitude and how involved do you get in crisis i mean do you you do have a whole the whole mmda with thousands of people but does it require your touch on do you need to uh, the mmda is a uh, you have good people there not, not just good in terms of uh, attitude and behavior, but, but good. I mean, there, you have good engineers, you have good enforcers, in the same manner that, that uh, you have, you know, still the, the bad eggs. Mm. But uh, generally, you, you have good people. And I think um, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to have them. And then and they, 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 I just give them room to, to work. Just give them room to, to do what they're good at. You asked for help at the very beginning and how uh, the private sector and the public. I guess, what do you need from the private sector? What do you need from the public? First of all is uh, trust us. Understand also that we're coming from a, a, uh, um, a position of weakness and uh, we need your help. And also to believe that we can, you know, things will happen. Once we do that, then, then we, we should be part of uh, really trying to help out uh, on our own. First, first well, let's plan our day, things like that, small things. Yeah. Small things matter. Small successes here and there. Plan our day, or take Uber instead of bringing your car. Or, I mean, take ride sharing. I'm not, yes. <laughs> I'm not yes. banding Uber. Grab car then grab also. Grab car, yes, also. <laughs> no. Tama. And then, diba, to be more understanding of, of, uh, of uh, our government people are doing what we can. In concretely, if you really want to be part of the solution, be, be a volunteer. Tell us what's happening on your road. Tell us what's happening on your street. Uh, see If you see someone that, that's committing a violation, of course you shouldn't be driving. You have a driver, take a picture. Yes. Send it to us. Uh, Eves uh, did something uh, to make us uh, have a no contact apprehension. So just provide us the picture, that date and time, and you should be brave enough to stand uh, by it, send your name. And then if, if we verify it, then it's, it becomes a no contact apprehension. Fantastic. Singapore has something like that, that right? Their cameras just click and then you get your ticket. Yeah. <laughs> um, US, uh, that's great. Uh, I think that's part of your uh, how to use technology yes. to, to help you solve things. So. Yes, yes. In the medium term, um, what things can we expect? You talked about some of the things that will happen in two to three years' mm -hmm. time, but let's say in a year, um, how do we, how do you gauge success, and how do we then, as as our as citizens, mm -hmm. feel like the, there's progress moving forward? Well, the traffic is just moving. I mean, moving uh, faster. So if we can move faster, then in, in a year's time, then then that that would uh, be a measure, a good measure of success. But then really to have uh, people volunteering is also part of it. And then using other alternative ways of uh, uh, movement. Why not use Pasig River? Why not have more bike lanes, more walkways? So success with regards to government, bringing in more pedestrian lanes and uh, bike lanes uh, for the people to use. So, and, and then again, the, the public utility transport sector you know that there's all that's one sector that's been confined to themselves for so long yes. that the interests are for their interests alone understandably but now if they can begin to be part of a of a real modernization uh, plan for for the commuters also so infrastructure and uh, and the uh, railway solutions will come in but it's so nice to think that once they're once they are there, we're also ready as a, a citizenry to 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 accept them and be part of of it. Fantastic. Well, uh, aside from all of the other. 
things that MMDA is doing. One of the things we work on with you is disaster, during times of disaster, mm -hmm. the MMDA drill. Um, I guess, is there, the, my last question is, do you see yourself changing MMDA in any new directions? Uh, you know, uh, MMDA, the problem with MMDA you now, the, the, the age gap, it's, it's, it's uh, right after the, the senior directors would retire, you have a, a gap of people that would take their place. Yeah. So hopefully we, we, we can have that. We can have that. Uh, we, and then, the, you know, the pay is low. Yes. Pay is low. But if we can uh, have people dedicated, the young people, to, to, to help us, that, that, would be, that would be good. So how to bring them in is really to, to make the image of MMDA is really a professional and dedicated agency for Metro Manila. For Metro Manila. Fantastic. Your last thoughts, Tim? Oh, last thoughts. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, again, really, as I said, it's really hard to ask people for understanding and for, you know, for more sacrifice. But really, if you want to, to help uh, government to solve its problem, then give us some more of your patience and understanding. We're getting there. Uh, uh, whatever we do on the road will affect the greater majority, the road itself. So just to be conscious that we're part of a greater community. Probably that's what that, uh, we need to remember. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks so much for Thank your you. thoughts. You're on Twitter or Facebook? Do, uh, can Facebook. they reach you directly? Facebook, Facebook? Yes, yes, Tim yes, Orbus, yes, yes, MMDA. Yeah. Okay, guys, he's there. Uh, he's been very open. He's coming in five months into his, to the job that affects all of our lives. So um, please send your questions. Any additional questions, comments, um, potential solutions? Potential uh, solutions. Potential very solutions. Uh, MMDA Chair Tim Orbos. Thanks for joining us.